This episode of Baking Day is brought to you by LG Canada. We'll be hearing more from them later in the episode. Welcome everyone to a baking day. Baking days are my favorite and today I am making a braided onion cheese bread. Oh, bread and cheese and a little caramelized onion. This is definitely going to be a good day. Maybe I should call this recipe a day and a half kind of baking day because there are actually two components you want to make a day ahead of when you plan on serving your onion cheese bread. The first is your caramelized onions and the second is the dough. So those are the two parts I'm going to start off with. First, let's caramelize some onions. Now if you've ever caramelized onions before, typically the method is to do it on the stove and you have to watch and stir them regularly. I am going to oven caramelize my onions, which means I don't have to pay as much attention to them. So the first thing you want to do is preheat your oven to 400 degrees. And I've got three cups of sliced onions already here. That's about three medium-sized cooking onions. Whether you have more or less when it comes to the onions, it doesn't really matter. I'll drizzle them with a little bit of olive oil and just a little salt and pepper. You know, in the fall and winter, quite often I'll make a big batch of caramelized onions and then they store in the refrigerator for a week to 10 days or you can pack them away and freeze them. That way you've got a good sort of cozy flavor builder on hand whenever you need it. Now I pop these into the oven uncovered. In total, they take about an hour to cook but just occasionally go in and give them a stir. While my onions are caramelizing in the oven, I can work on the dough. The dough for this onion cheese bread is a rich dough. So that means it has some milk, some butter and eggs. In fact, this is the same kind of dough you would use to make a cinnamon bun. But, of course, this is a very savory bread. I already have my flour measured into the bowl, and into that, I am adding a little bit of sugar. It doesn't really lend much in terms of sweetness to the dough, but it does help activate the yeast, so you get a really nice texture to it. I'm using instant dry yeast, so this is the equivalent of one packet, that's seven grams or two and a quarter teaspoons. Because it's instant, you just add it directly to your dry ingredients. I'll also add my salt and I'll just give that a quick stir. Now for the liquids, I've measured out half a cup, 125 ml of cold 2% milk. Yeast likes a warm liquid to come to life. So even though my milk is cold, I'm going to warm it up by adding half a cup or 125 ml of hot tap water. So the hot water warms the milk and I've got the perfect temperature for the yeast. Next, two eggs and they should be at room temperature. Now I start mixing the dough on low speed until almost all of the flour is combined then I start adding my half a cup, 115 grams of unsalted butter. It's cut into pieces and it's at room temperature. That way it works in easily. After about five minutes of mixing, you'll see that your dough pulls away from the sides of the bowl but still sticks at the bottom. Then you know it's kneaded enough. When you've got a rich dough that has milk and butter and eggs, the appropriate kneading time isn't as consequential. You know you're going to have a delicious, rich bread. I cover the bowl and I let the dough rise on the counter for an hour. This lets the yeast come to life and start doing its work. Then, you want to be able to chill the dough so it's easy to roll and handle. We have to make a braid after all. So what I do is I pop it in the fridge after that hour and I let it rise You've got some time flexibility here. I would say a minimum of six hours, but you have up to 24 hours. So you can make this and forget about it. 
You do want to keep an eye on your onions. So as I had mentioned, you give them a stir every now and again, just every 15 minutes. Then right before they're ready to come out of the oven, you want to pour on a tablespoon of balsamic vinegar. Give that a good stir in. That deglazes the pan and pulls up all those beautiful caramelized bits. So while the onions finish up cooking and the dough rises, now's a perfect time to hear from our sponsor. But you have to come back. You need to learn how to braid your bread. This recipe is brought to you by LG Canada, featuring the versatile LG Probate Convection Slide In Range. Perfectly cook your favorite crispy recipes, including wings, fries, and other family favorites in one oven with LG's built-in large capacity air fryer. The air fry setting circulates hot air at high speeds for an even cook every time. You can also count on LG's probate convection setting to deliver precise heat, which is especially important in multi-rack baking. Because the element is at the back of the oven and not the bottom, air is distributed evenly to all racks. This means your cookies, appetizers and more will be evenly and perfectly cooked every time. This range also has an air sous vide setting. With its low and consistent heat to lock in flavors, you can slowly and gently cook vacuum sealed foods or other slow cooked recipes. Keep an eye on your baking and cooking and keep the heat inside with the InstaView door. Two quick knocks on the door lights up the oven so you can check on the progress without letting out heat. Bring the sleek design of the LG Pro Bake Convection slide in range to your kitchen. And here's the dough after being in the fridge overnight. You'll find it doesn't double in size the way, say, a French bread would, but it will, now that it's going to start warming up, rise and be such a beautiful, softly textured bread. So what I need to do is, oh, what I need to do is tell you about the fillings. So here are my caramelized onions with the balsamic vinegar. It's amazing how three cups of onions cooks down to this volume. I also have two cups of grated cheddar cheese. It's up to you what kind of cheese you want to use. A good cheese that melts well, like a Swiss, an Asiago, even a mozzarella if you want something on the mild side. But I do love the combination of the onions and the cheddar. I'll lightly flour my work surface and get ready to roll. It's because of the braiding detail that you want to work with the dough while it's chilled. You can proof this dough at room temperature and work with it while it's softer, but it can get a little sticky. You don't have to trim the edges of this bread. It'll all be woven in to the braid. But now it's time to put on the fillings. So down the center, I'll spread my onions first and then I'll top it with the cheddar cheeks. Now for the cheese. And now for the fun part, the braiding. Braiding a cheese bread is nothing like braiding your hair or even braiding pie pastry to top a fruit pie. It's an altogether different look that doesn't look like braiding to begin with. So what you need to do is make cuts at about a 45 degree angle on either side of the filling. Okay. And I start by folding over the dough to seal in the cheese and the onion. Then the first two, this is the trickiest part, the first two pieces, and even if they're uneven, don't worry about it, but you flip them over so that when you start braiding, you've got a nice straight angle as the first braid. And then you keep layering and layering. And so you're really not dealing with a single layer of this bread dough because as it gets braided, they weave and build on top of each other. 
So the volume, the lift you get from this bread after it rises and bakes is amazing. And then once you get close to the end, I think I'll unwrap these two. You can trim away if you find it's a little thick. I'm just gonna trim away those two little pieces of dough. You want to fold this piece up again and then return to your braiding. Give your end pieces a little pinch and a tuck and they will never be seen again. And now because your dough is cold, it's fairly easy to handle so that you can slide it onto your baking tray. Now I'll cover this with a tea towel and let it rise for an hour. Now that my bread has had an hour to proof, it's time to bake it. Make sure you've preheated your oven to 350 and to give the bread a nice shine, a little bit of egg wash. That's just an egg mixed with about a tablespoon of cold water. And if you'd like, a little sprinkling of sesame seeds is always nice. Or you could do poppy seeds. All right, this is ready for the oven. Let's bake it. Now that this bread has had a chance to cool, we can slice into it. And maybe you're asking, well, when do I serve this bread? Well, it's just delicious on its own. Or if you're doing a mixed um, bread basket for say a brunch, or you wanna put this on a cheese board, oh, it toasts up beautifully. If you wanted to cut slices and lay them on a baking tray like this, it's a great use for bread after it's a couple of days old. I just love that it's the simple combination of a rich egg dough with the intensity of the caramelized onions and the cheddar cheese in there. The gratification of making bread is hard to describe. It's so satisfying. And then on top of that, when you can get creative and take on a new skill like braiding your bread and working in savory flavors, well, that's absolutely fantastic. I really hope you'll give this recipe a try and enjoy your best baking day ever. <laughs>